longer spells of rain and the risk of thunder too, staying mild and muggy. And that's all for me this morning. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye. Hello, good morning. It's uh, seven minutes past nine. You might remember the story of ultra runner Russ, Russ Cook, nicknamed the hardest geezer. Russ is running the length of Africa in a bid to break records and to raise money for charity. He's, of course, been documenting his journey on social media and the latest of his adventures have seen him separated from his support team and kidnapped by men armed with machetes. We'll find out more about that in a moment. First, here's a reminder of the challenge he's undertaking. This is where I started, this is where I'm going, and this is where I am now. I've run 3,697k so far, and I've got 11,303 left to go. In this episode, the team reunites Soggy and I. We meet Harry's sister, oh and I hit the tarmac once more, but not everything goes to plan. Well, Russ can join us now. Russ, hello, how are you? Hello, good morning, how are you doing? Very well, how, and more importantly though, how are you? Because we've spoken to you on the programme uh -huh. before, um, and yes. we'd spoken about kind of you being robbed, and now you've been kidnapped and taken on quite a journey, separated from your team. Yeah, well, I wasn't I wasn't quite kidnapped. It, it, it was what I thought was happening at the time, but it turned out to be more of a misunderstanding. Um, but yeah, it, it's been a very eventful kind of week or so. Um, that's yeah. I, I mean, it's been quite uh, quite traumatic events that have taken place, really. So where are you now? Uh, I'm in the DRC in a border town next to Cabinda called um, Mwanda. How, how how frightening was it, Russ? You were dragged off into the into the bush, weren't you, with a, by a bunch of guys with machetes, and they yeah. kept hold of you until you could sort out you know the misunderstanding as as you put it i mean it must have been quite frightening oh uh, man <laughs> i was absolutely bricking it um to, to, yeah to be totally honest uh, everything goes through your head in those moments and um i was uh, i was pretty terrified i won't lie how, do, how did you end up getting separated from your team so uh, some of the roads that we planned to go down from the research and the the knowledge that we'd found online were were fine but they turned out not to be so fine and, and the my support van couldn't make it down them um, and there was we planned multiple different routes and we tried multiple different ways but uh, ultimately the boys couldn't get the boys couldn't get to me and I was in some uh, like quite rural parts with the, you know dirt roads and uh, I was stumbling my way through into a village um, where it was honestly I can't even like really believe what was happening but it was um, yeah, the chief came he was asking me for loads of money uh, and then I, mean, I told him I didn't have any and things gradually got more and more heated eventually I've got the entire village surrounding me uh, they, they brought me out with the men with machetes into the bush and like I can't understand anything that's going on, so I'm just like <laughs> absolutely <laughs> thinking like that I don't know what you know what scene is about to take place here. I, you know, eventually I managed to get away, um, but then I've um, after that tried to reroute to the boys, and then two blokes on motorbike have, have pulled up, and I'm still kind of like very much on edge because of what's already happened in the day, and. They're trying to communicate to me, but we just huge language barriers, and they're like, "You need to come with us, basically." And I'm like, "I really don't want to get on these boys' motorbikes right now." <laughs> oh, um, but I kind of, I'm in the middle of the Congo. I have no water. I've got no food. I've got no phone service. I've got nothing. So I'm like, my only option is to trust that the boys, my boys, had sent this guy to take me back to them. Um, has, it made, it made you my, the I, has it made you question the wisdom of this journey? Uh, nah, but, well, maybe a little. I think, you know, there's definitely things that we can do to try and mitigate these things from happening. Obviously, we're a really small team with limited resources. Um, so, so far, we've just tried to, like, do as much as we possibly can. And, you know, now we, we're going back into Gabinda and we're going to kind of re-strategize the next few months. But it, we always knew that these type of things were a risk, like, to happen 
So it's not like we didn't think it was ever going to happen. It was just like, yeah, we'll just try and try our best to kind of deal with it as it comes. Well, um, you're safe for the moment, which is lovely to see. And all of this, of course, is to raise money um, for those who do yes. need it. So kind of, I know you'll be keeping that in your mind as well. But good luck to you and all of your team. And do stay safe as much as you can be. Thanks very much. I'll try my best. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah. Cheers, Ross. So um, he's exactly putting himself in the safest situation, oh but hopefully yeah. nothing is um, dangerous yeah. as well. he experienced. Yeah. That's um, it, that's it from tomorrow. us. Yeah, yeah. Back, back tomorrow from six o'clock. Have a good day. Bye. -bye.